Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Zantanetti, and we're here this morning just to break the bread of life. And today's word, we're looking at the title, The Greatest Delight. I think about that because my greatest delight is to do God's will. Well, let's look at Psalms 40, verse 8. It tells us, I delight to do your will, O my God. Yes, your law is within my heart. Take a look at that. Meditate upon that as I tell you what this word delight actually means. You know, the word delight is an old Hebrew word, and it talks about, and, and it's, it's real simple when you look at it. The real meaning is to be enclosed by something that is spoken righteously. To be enclosed by something that is spoken righteously. And that means that when you delight yourself in the will of God and His law, you wrap yourself around that law, and when you're wrapped in that law, it will speak to you, but it will speak to you what is righteous, the righteousness of God's heart. And actually, the first law that was given to us, we see it in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, and this is the law that he gave them, besides telling them to be fruitful and multiply, he said, you know, you can eat from any tree in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you may not eat. For in the day that you eat, in the day that you eat of it, in, listen, dying you shall die. What does that mean? It means that the moment that they decided to eat from that tree, he says, the moment you eat from that tree, you're going to start dying. You're going to phase out. Oh, you're going to phase out. Well, let me just first uh, say something concerning the heart. Jeremiah tells us in 17.9, it says that the heart is deceitful above all things and it is incurable. Who can know it? And then he tells us in verse 10, I, Jehovah, O Yahweh, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give to every man, each man, according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Now think about it. He gave us the Ten Commandments for a reason. I want you to see these Ten Commandments in a very simple way. Because God gave us Ten Commandments. And you say, why do I have to keep listening to about the commandments? Well, we're going to talk about the law. What is the law and why did God give us the law? You know, the very first word, if you look to, the, to your right, the very top, anoiki, means I. And God immediately tells us it's Him. It's not any man. He says, I. I, Yahweh. I, the Lord. And that's, that's the first commandment. There is no other God. You shall have no other God. I'm the only God. And so when we look at it, remember that Jeremiah said that he knows the heart. He searches the heart. Well, it's the physical heart he knows, but also he knows the spiritual heart. And it's always talking about the seat of emotion and affections. Everything that is within us because of our fallen nature, we sit on it. <laughs> the seat of emotions and the seat of affections. Well, let's talk about the intention of the good laws. Well, God is the one. His intent, the intention of good laws, God saw that it was good. In chapter 1 of Genesis, you see that. Every day of creation, it was good. The only time he said it was not good was that man should not be alone. But he gave him commandments. The first commandment he gave him was to be fruitful and multiply. Why? Because you have been made in the image of God. So, now many laws have been established within our lands, but not necessarily every law was made with the best intentions. And we know that. And that's why it's important that those who know what the Word of God says will be able to discern the good from the evil. Got to go back. Those who know the word of the Lord, who discern from what it is good from evil. Okay, so understand that we are called to study the word of God intensely, and we have to look into the book intensely. We have to look into the book and know what God says. Why? Because God teaches us as we take time to study the Word of God. 
wherever you are, open the book. Open the book and look inside of it. You know, God has given every man authority, but he has given certain people authority to establish laws. And therefore, we must use wisdom to know the true intention of the establishment of that law. Every good law that is established toward humanity is inspired by God. And notice that I said good laws, good, 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 good laws. There are laws that we know that are not right. And Romans 13 tells us that every law has been established by God. And you say, wow, every law, God has put good in the heart of man also to establish laws. And he puts the mallet down. Hey, this is the law. And he gives men the power of this mallet. And when, listen to this, when the laws are established, we, t we ought to obey them if they do not contradict the word of God. So the intention of every good law should be for the establishment of protection, abuse, against abuse uh, of other people. So again, our laws that are good should be established for the protection, prosperity, and the health of all people. Now, we also have laws that protect our general safety, and it ensures our rights as citizens against abuse by other people. And folks, we have seen much of this being broken when we allow things to happen in our land against the law. As we know, I mean, even the, 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 the sixth commandment of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not murder, well, you know what follows after that? Adultery. That's murder too. So the first seven laws were given to Noah when he came out of the ark, and these laws have been established in our judicial system and cannot be eradicated. I said cannot be eradicated. You want to know why? Because they're part of our judicial system. If you look deep within the history and you look, watch this now, to eradicate, to try to take out the laws, the seven laws that were given to Noah, take out the whole court system. And you would have to go through so many, I mean, millions and millions of, docu of documents to remove them. You can't, because God gave them and they're holy. Let's look at the big seven. I mean, the first seven tells us exactly what he was talking about. And what was it? The first was not to worship idols. It's always, it's always with God not to worship idols because he's the only God. Not to curse God. I've, I've heard people curse God. Not to commit murder. Not to commit adultery. That includes bestiality and all sexual immorality. Oh, man. Not to steal. That's the eighth. Not to eat flesh torn from a living animal and to establish court justice. This is what God wanted. Now, what is the law of God? Well, the Bible is the law of God. And do you know that the Bible has names concerning the word of God? There are at least seven that we can establish here that the word of God says of itself. And you know, this is Psalms 119. And when you go to verse 1, you're going to see it says the... The heavens declare the glory of God and their expanse, the works of his hand. Day to day they pour forth speech, night to night reveals knowledge. In other words, God has already placed the laws of his heart in creation itself. All we got to do is look at the creation and we'll see the laws. Well, what are the names of the Lord? Well, or the law of God, the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord is the first one that we can see. It is, it is called the law of the Lord. The second one is called the testimony of the Lord. And, and again, this is in Psalms 19. The third one is called the statutes of the Lord. These are names. We have the commandment of the Lord. We have the fear of the Lord. Can you imagine that? The word of the Lord is you can call it the fear of the Lord. Oh, yeah. When you read the Bible, don't you fear the Lord? <laughs> you got to open it with, with reverence. And then it's also called the judgments of the Lord. Now, think about this. There are seven names that God gave us to establish the word of God. I mean, you, you could be in charge. You say, let's open to the judgments of the Lord. Um, let's open to the testimonies of the Lord. Let's open to what? The amen. Any way you open. Let's open to the, the wisdom of the Lord. The, the Bible has so many characteristics, and we're going to look at least nine. At least nine. And this is all within 
Psalms 19 that we just read. And we're going to put them together in a little bit. So God's word has nine characteristics. The first one is that it is perfect. <laughs> That's a characteristic. God is perfect. His word is perfect. The second one is God, uh, the, God's word is sure. We know that God is sure. And the foundation of his throne, righteousness and truth, is the foundation of his throne. And it is sure. Well, God's word is right. <laughs> Who is more righteous than God? He always does what is right, and he wants to teach us how to do what's right by looking into his word. Ah, the word of God is pure. I love that. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Well, how do you see what is pure in God's word? You have to look into his laws. God's word is clean. And we're going to see why it is clean. We're going to put them together in a moment and see. Because they're there, but I wanted you to see them in an outline form. God's word is eternal. The Bible tells us that he established the heavens by his eternal word. Everything that you see in nature is established by the eternal power and essence of God's word. That which was spoken has become. God's word is true. No matter what we see in life, no matter what lie we hear, we can always turn to the book because it is true. And then God's word is altogether righteous. Every law that he made is righteous. You don't have to ask if it's righteous. You don't have to ask if his judgments are, are true and sure. Absolutely. But you know what? The psalmist here, David, tells us that God's word is sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. I know that for myself. God's word is so sweet. I love the word of God. It keeps me from a lot of trouble. Now, there are six blessings that are connected with the word of God. And the first thing we want to do is I want to go back now and I'm going to uh, just reiterate what was said. The law of God and the characteristics of God that are placed there. Now, here it is. The law of the Lord is perfect, and it converts the soul. So here we see there are six blessings, and the first one is that the law of the Lord is perfect, and it converts the souls of those who turn to God. Remember that when you're converted, that means you're turning away from one thing, and you're being indoctrinated into something else, and it's the Word of God. But then the Bible says that the law of the Lord is the testimony of the Lord is sure. And what does it do? It makes the simple wise. You could take the most simplest person and let them study the word of God and they will be more wise than those who are so intelligent who don't have any truth of God's word in them. The Bible tells us this and it is important that we look into the word of God continually because Watch this. Didn't we read that I delight to do your will, O Lord? Yes, your law is written within my heart. Well, as we look into the law, this is what it's all about. So we see that the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure to make making wise the simple. But we also see that the statutes of the Lord are right and it rejoices the heart. What are the statutes? That which has been established by God. There are principles that have been established by God's word. Oracles that have been established and we must know what they are in order for us to do his will. And then it tells us this. It says, again, the statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. One of the things I look at for in God's word is, Lord, help me to see exactly what you're teaching me and help me, Lord, so that I can see clearly with my spiritual eyes which way and what you want me to do. And then it says that the fear of the Lord is clean. Watch this. Enduring forever. And the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Now watch this. Very important. We're to desire it more than gold, more than the finest gold, more than the honeycomb, more than the sweetest honeycomb. Why? Because God's word 
is supreme above all. And moreover, moreover, we are warned by the word of God. We are warned by the word of God. And we know that in keeping God's word, there is rewards. The obedience of God's word is about rewards. Now, I want to share something with you in closing. The reason that we should study God's law, the reason that we should know his commandments, his statutes, his principles, his oracles, is because this is who he is. How can a person say, I know about God, but don't know his laws? I, I know about God, but you don't know what his commandments are. We say, well, there's only two commandments we got we to gotta do, really. And that's love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. But watch this now. Do we really know how to love God? Do we really know how to love our neighbor? Do you know the 613 laws? You say, so many laws. If you read them, they're in categories. Just go ahead and get online and put the 613 laws of God in categories. And you're going to see how he gave it to us in categories. As a matter of fact, if you go to our website, and that's libertypraise.org, Look for, look for it. It says the 613 laws. They're there for you. Now, check this out. They're in categories for family, for worship, for eating. Oh, boy. For eating, for establishing peace in a land, categories of giving and taking. Now, watch this. If we don't know what those laws are, do we really know how to live according to God's word? I'm going to go back to the first slide. I mean, look what it says, and I'm going to read it again because it's very powerful. The greatest delight is I delight to do your will. Oh, my God. The word delight, the word delight means to enclose yourself again in the law of God and hear what he has to say. Now, watch this now. I delight. Now also the Bible says to delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I love the way Joyce Myers put this one day. I was just, I just happened to hear about it and, and I saw it one time. It was very interesting, very simple. She took spaghetti <laughs> and she shows spaghetti in his, in his form without... Um, being cooked, she says, you know, you could take this and break it. So easy. She says, but if you put it in water, and she had it already cooked in water, and you take it out, it's so soft. You, can, you could just move with it. And you know what's interesting? She said that to delight ourselves in the Lord is to be soft in his presence, to be ready. And I knew in my heart what the Hebrew word of delight means and it's interesting, it goes right along with the soft spaghetti. And that means to be flexible. That God's word, although it is sometimes strenuous, though, though it is sometimes strenuous, and sometimes it is hard, if we take it in and we humble ourselves under the law of God, God will soften our hearts. But because the, Lord is, the law is strong, it will also protect us. And so we need to be very careful and learn what God says so that we can be according to his will, doing his will, because his law is deep within our hearts. And in this same psalm, it says, I not only delight, but I've come to do your will. In the full volume of your book, thank you, Father. Thank you for blessing us and thank you and teach us to do your will according to your word in Jesus' name. Amen.